Yes, madam. Proceed. Okay. So, so that is another topic that is the internal structure of dicot and monocot leaf. Okay. Okay. So generally, we already know about these leaves. So what are the leaves? So these are the lateral appendages which are developed exogenously from the nodes of the stem. Okay, so mainly the main function of the leaves are that is photosynthesis. Okay, so generally these leaves are usually flat and green in color and generally they have the limited growth and they are arranged appropriately on the stem. Okay, and they are um, generally sometimes uh, they are axillary buds developing axils. So the main functions of the leaves are uh, the trap the light for photosynthesis and mainly helps in exchange of gases. So external structure of the leaf. When we observe the leaf, it contains so a petiole that is the stalk of the leaf. It is called as a petiole. At the end, it is margins and central midrib veins and lamina so this is the uh, when we observe the structure external structure of the leaf so next one is the here the dicot so here we can observe the dicot and monocot leaves also so generally when we observe the banana leaf so it is a how the leaf uh, how these veins are arranged parallel leaves okay so here the monocot leaves that is long and slender leaves and here parallel venation. The main difference between dicot and monocot leaves is in dicots that is reticulate venation is seen. That is network like vein -like. veins are arranged in reticulate. Whereas the in monocots the leaves are arranged parallel veins. Okay. So this is the main difference when by observing the leaf we can identify that it is a dicot plant or monocot based on these leaves only. So here first one that is the monocot leaf. Here the veins are parallel parallel veins whereas here the veins are reticulate network like okay so this one is the second one is a dicot leaf whereas first one is a monocot leaf so monocot leaves are long slender with parallel venation whereas the dicot leaves they are broad leaves and branching veins forming the network hence reticulate venation is seen in dicot leaves so next one is the internal structure of the leaf so generally when we observe the leaf internal structure, so it contains upper epidermis and on the epidermis, so, so the axic cuticle is present and here the epidermis which is followed by the polysade mesophyll. So here uh, epidermis which is followed by the mesophyll tissue. Okay, so here again this mesophyll tissue, it is uh, differentiated into polysade and spongy. Mesophyll. So, polysaid mesophylls are, they are elongated, are reticular, elongated structures. Whereas, here in the spongy, so here the more number of intercellular spaces are present. Okay. And here the lower epidermis is also seen. And the lower epidermis, here the stomata is present. Okay. So, normal leaf, that is dicot leaf. When we observe the internal structure of the dicot leaf, so it contains epidermis, that is upper epidermis side lower epidermis and in the central mesophyll tissue. So here this mesophyll tissue is again classified into polysaid mesophyll tissue and spongy. So here the polysaid tissue, they are elongated structures. So here polysaid parenchyma and spongy parenchyma here the bundle sheath. So here the vascular bundles are also present. That is xylamine phloem and spongy parenchyma. So this one is a spongy. So here in the polysaid parenchyma, there is no uh, intercellular spaces. But here in the spongy parenchyma, here intercellular spaces are seen. Okay. So again here, that is the dicot leaf. When we observe the dicot and monocot leaf. So generally dicot leaf, it is dorsi ventral in nature. That is we can identify the dorsal side and ventral side that is the upper side and lower side okay whereas when we observe the monocot leaf so there is a no differentiation of dorsal and ventral because they are isobilateral okay 
So here the dicot leaf, it is dorsi ventral in nature, whereas uh, monocot leaf, it is isobilateral. That is, there is no differentiation of about a dorsal and ventral side of the leaf. Okay, so first we will discuss about the dicot leaf. So here the uh, dicot leaf, that is dorsi ventral in nature, that is the structure of the dicot, the, when we observe the TS of the dicot leaf, so it contains epidermis, okay. So we already discussed so internal structure that is epidermis, which is followed by the mesophyll tissue and that is upper and lower epidermis and in the mesophyll tissues, these vascular bundles are present. So these are surrounded by the bundle sheath. So first one is the epidermis. In, when we observe the uh, transverse section of this dicot leaf, so first one is the, it is the epidermis. So there are two epidermal layers, an adaxial and aboxial. So adaxial means upper, aboxial means lower surface of the leaf. Okay. So each is uniseriate, that is it is single layered and composed of row of compactly arranged tubular cells. Okay. So these cells are compactly arranged. So here the here epidermal region. So it is compactly arranged without intercellular spaces. So, and the outer walls are cutinized and possess the thin cuticle. So, on the epidermal, that is the, it is thickened with the cuticle. So, the outer walls are cutinized and possess thin cuticle and more thickened than those on the lower side. So, on the lower side, less thickened. So, stomata occur on the lower epidermis. So, in the dicot leaf, that is generally Stomata. So, we already discussed about this stomata. So, stomata generally they are present in lower epidermal region only. So, the main function of this waxy cuticle is which prevents the loss of water. Okay. So, generally here the epidermis which is thickened with the cuticle. So, the main function of this cuticle is which prevents loss of water. So, next one is the epidermis which is followed by the next one is a mesophyll tissue. Okay. So, it is another name is that is a ground tissue which forming the mesophyll which is differentiated into polysaid and spongy cells. When we observe the internal structure, it is also it is also total, it is called as a mesophyll tissue in between this uh, upper and lower epidermis. So the total tissue, it is called as a mesophyll tissue. But here the mesophyll tissue again differentiated into polysaid parenchyma and spongy parenchyma. Okay. So the uh, the uh, uh, what you call the mesophyll tissues which is present uh, below the upper epidermis. Here it is called as a polysaid parenchyma. So the uh, the polysaid cells which occurs towards the upper epidermis and they are columnar cells with scanty that is intercellular spaces are absent and remain arranged more or less right angle to the upper epidermis. So the cells are also arranged um, right angle to the epidermis. So how these are elongated cells, okay? So here, chloroplasts are abundantly present and which particularly occur along the radial walls of the cells. So here more amount of chloroplast is present in these polysaid cells. So generally these mesophyll tissues, they are mesophyll tissue which is made up of parenchyma cells and they contain the chloroplast. So here there are two layers of polysaid cells. So the spongy cells which are, so here these polysaid cells are arranged in two rows. And the spongy cells which occur towards the lower epidermis and they are quite loosely arranged with conspicuous intercellular spaces. So here more number of intercellular spaces, we can observe the intercellular spaces. So the number of chloroplast is naturally much smaller here. So which explain the pale green color of the lower surface of the leaf. So when we observe the dicot leaf, so that is the upper outs, uh, when we dorsal side is more thickened when compared to the lower side, the ventral side, because here more number of chloroplast cells which are present on the dorsal side that is uh, that is dorsal side that is a polysaid tissue is present and it contains more number of chloroplast which contain more number whereas on the lower side spongy tissue so with less number of chloroplast that's why when we that's why we can differentiate the dorsal and ventral side okay 
So when we observe the leaf, that is the leaf, the dorsal side is more thickened when compared to the ventral side. So this is the reason. So more number of chloroplasts are present on the dorsal side. That is on the dorsal side, polysate tissues are present and which contain more number of chloroplasts compared to the spongy tissue, which, can, which contain less number of chloroplasts. So next one is a mesophyll tissue. That is, it is differentiated into dorsal and ventral, uh, sorry, uh, polysate and spongy. Okay. So mainly this uh, polysate tissue mainly helps in the photosynthesis because they contain more number of chloroplasts and mainly helps in the photosynthesis. Whereas this spongy tissue mainly helps in storage of the food materials. Okay. So the main function here, it mainly helps in the storage of the food materials. So, next one is vascular bundles. Okay. And also here in the spongy tissue. So, here it also helps in the storage of food materials and also helps in the exchange of gases between the leaf and the atmosphere because due to these um, cavities or intercellular spaces. So, it also helps in the exchange of gases also, this spongy tissue. So next one is the vascular bundles. So the bundles which are collateral and closed. So we just now we discussed about this collateral vascular bundle. They are arranged in the same radius. That is, okay, that is xylem and phloem are the same and closed here. That is here that the cambium is absent. So they are located in the mesophyll. Collateral. So here the vascular bundles are collateral and closed in dicot leaf. So they are located in the mesophyll and the size of the bundle which depends on the position one chooses to take in making a section. So the bigger bundles are composed of xylem and phloem and form uh, towards the upper epidermis and later towards the lower. So bigger vascular bundles, they are present towards the upper epidermis and smaller one at the lower side. Okay. So the xylem is made up of tracheary elements and the phloem uh, uh, generally here the xylem which is made up of tracheal elements and phloem which is mainly composed of sieve tubes and companion cells. So here this web bundle which remains surrounded by a row of colorless parenchyma cells. Um, they are called as a bundle sheath. So this band is, which is referred as a bundle sheath or border parenchyma. That is here the vascular bundles which are surrounded by a Parenchyma cells, colorless parenchyma cells. It is called as a bundle sheath. So, thus the bundle is not in direct contact with the mesophyll cells. So, they are not directly contacting because it is separating. This bundle sheath is separating the vascular bundles with the mesophyll cells. Okay. So, parenchyma, which often color cholenchyma cells are also present on outer and inner side of the bundle so which may reach up to the two epidermal layers. So these cells mainly constitute the bundle sheath extension. So this is the bundle. So here uh, when we so this is about the monocot leaf okay here in dicot leaf. So here this is so here the xylem and phloem. So here xylem and here phloem so it is surrounded by this ring it is called as a bundle sheath. Okay, so here it is upper epidermis. So in the upper epidermis, no stomata. Whereas in, in lower epidermis, that is stomata is present. And here the substomatal cavity is also present. So this is the spongy parenchyma. So here the intercellular spaces are present. So it mainly helps in the exchange of gases. Okay, here this one is the polysate parenchyma. It contains chloroplast and mainly helps in the photosynthesis. So this is about the uh, dicot leaf. Okay, next one is the monocot leaf. So here when we observe the monocot, TS of monocot leaf, so it contains upper epidermis. So here the there is a no differentiation. So when we observe the structure, so totally it is similar. So here the mesophyll tissue, it is the, there is a no differentiation of polysate tissue and spongy tissue. So all are similar. And here these are the vascular bundles. Okay. So, monocot leaf. So, monocot leaf, it is isobilateral in nature. That is, there is a no differentiation of dorsal and ventral. 
Okay, isobilateral leave. Example for isobilateral leave means that is a monocot leave. Whereas the uh, dorsi ventral leave means that is a um, uh, dicot leave. So in dicot, that is there is a differentiation of dorsal and ventral side. But whereas in monocot leaf, there is a no differentiation of uh, dorsal and ventral because total they are similar. Uh, epi, first one is the internal structure of this uh, monocot leaf. So it is also contains epidermis. <coughs> So epidermis, here the two epidermal layers are present. One on each and upper and lower surfaces. Here also two layers, that is upper epidermis and lower epidermis. So here this one is the upper epidermis and this one is the lower epidermis. Okay, so uniseriate upper and lower epidermal layers which are composed of more or less oval cells. Here the cells are oval. Okay. And next one. So here the few big motor cells or bully form cells are also present in groups here and there in the furrows of the upper epidermis. So this is the uh, special character this is, that is in the monocot leaf that is the bully form cells or motor cells are present. So these bully form or motor cells mainly helps in the folding, rolling or unrolling of the leaves. Okay. So, motor cells are bulliform cells are present on the upper epidermis. So, stomata. So, each consisting of a pore, guard cells and stomatal chamber are present on both epidermal layers. So, this is another difference between the dicot and monocot. So, first difference is the presence of motor cells are bulliform cells on the upper epidermis. Second difference that is the present that is generally in dicot leaf only the stomata which is present on the lower epidermis whereas in monocots and both that is upper and lower epidermis which contains the stomata. So here a thick cuticle is present on the outer walls of the epidermal cells. So here the bully form cells mainly helps in the folding of the leaves. So this is about the epidermis. Okay. So second one is a mesophyll tissue. So, it is not clearly differentiated into polyside and spongy parenchyma. But the cells just next to the epidermal layers are um, somewhat a bit longer, while the cells of the central mesophyll region are oval and irregularly arranged. But here there is a no differentiation of polyside and spongy. So, the cells are filled with here uh, chlor many chloroplasts. So, many intercellular spaces are also present in this region. So, here the substomatal chambers of the stomata are also situated in this region. So, in the mesophyll region, here the substomatal chambers are also present. So, this is about the here. When we observe this, so these are the substomatal chambers. Okay. So, here the stomata are present on both upper epidermis and here also lower epidermis. So, next one is the vascular system. So, here the mini vascular bundles are present and they are arranged in parallel series. So, the central vascular bundle is largest in size and generally here also vascular bundles are conjoined, collateral and closed. So, each vascular bundle which remains surrounded by a double layered bundle sheet. So, whereas in monocard, uh, dicots only, a layer of bundle sheet is present, but here double layer, two layered bundle sheet is present. So, outer layer of bundle sheet which consists of thin walled cells, while the inner layer it is made up of thick walled cells. Okay, so on the upper as well as on the lower surface of large vascular bundles, there are present patches of sclerenchyma, which are closely associated with the epidermal layers. Okay, there is no such association between the sclering time and small vascular bundles. So, only in the uh, lar large vascular bundles only, uh, in the region of land, uh, large vascular bundles only, here the patches of sclering time is present, which are closely associated with the epidermal layers. But uh, these are absent in small vascular bundles. So, generally large vascular bundles are present in the central layer. Okay, the next one is the xylem mainly occurs towards the upper surface and phloem towards the lower surface. So, xylem mainly consists of vessels and tracheids, sometimes small amount of xylem parenchyma. 
the rest phloem mainly consists of sieve tubes and companion cells. So this is about the dicotyl monocotyl. So here next one is a, what are the differences between these dicotyl monocotyl? So first one is the stomata. So here uh, we already discussed about this stomata, guard cells. So the guard cells of stomata are kidney shaped in dicotyl. Whereas the guard cells of the stomata are dumbbell shaped. Okay. So based on that, here when we observe that, when we take the leaf, and we take the section cutting. So, if the by observing the type of stomata, so if the stomata which is surrounded by the guard cells, so generally based on the shape of these guard cells, we can identify that it is a dicot leaf or monocot. So, generally dicot leaf, it is uh, the guard cells are kidney or bean shaped, whereas monocots here dumbbell shaped. Okay. So, next one is that the shape of the dicot plant leaf is broader and relatively smaller. Whereas the monocot plant leaf, it is slender and long in shape. Okay. Next. Uh, leaf orientation. Generally, the leaf orientation of the dicot leaf is dorsi ventral. That is, they, we can identify, uh, we can differentiate the dorsal and ventral side. Whereas the orientation of monocot leaf is isobilateral. That is, on both sides, it is similar. So, upper and lower surface color. So, the upper surface of the dicot leaf is dark green. While the lower surface is light green. We already discussed this. So, because more number of chloroplasts are present on the upper region. That is the polysate tissue which contains more number of chloroplasts. Hence, it gives a dark green. There is a lower epidermis. That is the spongy tissue is present in the dicot leaf. And it contains less number of chloroplasts. Hence, it is light green in color. Okay. Next, here in monocot leaf, upper and lower surfaces of the monocot leaf are equally green. So, there is no high uh, differentiation in color. So, next one is the size of the vascular bundle. So, the vascular bundle uh, is large in dicot leaf. Whereas, in monocot leaf, both small and large vascular bundles are present. Okay. <laughs> so, next one is the stomata arrangement. In dicot leaf, stomata are usually present on the lower surface of the leaf. So, it is a condition referred to as a hypostomatic. So, if the stomata which is present only on the lower epidermis, so this condition is called as a hypo. Hypo means low, low uh, lower epidermis, okay, hypostomatic. It is only, that is, if the stomata which is confined only to the lower epidermis, it is called as a hypostomatic. So, this condition is seen in dicot leaf. Whereas the leaves of monocot plant, which have the stomata on both the surface of the leaf, that is, it is referred as the amphistomatic. So, that is, stomata is present on upper epidermis and lower epidermis. So, this condition it is called as the amphistomatic. So, this point is also important for uh, mainly uh, to the competitive exams. So, amphistomatic, amphistomatic condition, which is seen in dicot leaf or monocot leaf like that. So, generally, it is seen in monocot leaf. Hypostomatic condition is seen in dicot leaf. Okay. So, next one is the intercellular spaces. The intercellular spaces of a dicot plant are relatively large due to the presence of loosely packed mesophyll cells. Whereas in monocot plant leaf, the intercellular spaces are relatively small due to compact arrangement of the mesophyll cells. So, the intercellular spaces in dicot are Large because in the because here the spongy tissues are loosely arranged. So here it shows large sized uh, vas uh, intercellular spaces. But here in monocots, so the cells are compactly arranged. So here small intercellular spaces are seen. Okay. So next one is the silica deposition. So the walls of the epidermal cells of dicot leaf, they do not have the silica deposition. Whereas the walls of the epidermal cells of monocot plant leaf have the heavy deposition of silica. So this is also important point. So generally silica depositions which are seen in the monocot leaf. Next one stomata arrangement. So the stomata are arranged randomly on the epidermis of the dicot plant. Okay. Whereas here the stomata are arranged in parallel rows and are uniformly present on both the leaf surface. So, this is also we discussed in, uh, in 
last class. So here they are uh, randomly or scatterly arranged stomata, whereas here they are arranged parallelly. Okay, in monocotyl. Next one is a bundle sheath. So the bundle sheath of the dicot plant leaf generally has a single layer and formed as a colorless cells. Okay, here that is the vascular bundles which are surrounded by a parenchymatous layer which is single layer and colorless in dicot leaf. Whereas in monocots, so here the bundle sheath of the monocot plant leaf, it have double layered and formed of colored cells due to presence of chloroplast. So it is double layered, two layered in monocot leaf. So next one is a mesophyll differentiation. So generally the mesophylls of the dicot leaf is differentiated into two parts. That is the lower spongy mesophyll and upper polysade. Whereas the, in monocots, that is the mesophyll of monocot plant leaf has no such differentiation. So venation pattern, that is the venation pattern in dicot plant leaf is reticulate. That is the veins are interconnected and form a web-like network. Uh, here, in monocot leaf, the venation pattern of the monocot plant leaf is parallel, whereby the secondary veins run parallel to each other of your central. Next, here the hypodermis of the midrib, the hypodermis of the midrib region of dicot plant leaf is colenchymatous. Okay. Whereas in monocot plant leaf, the hypodermis of the midrib region is sclerenchymatous. So, here the, here the difference. Colenchymatous, midrib region, it is uh, uh, the midrib region of the dicot leaf, it is made up of colenchymatous cells. Whereas in midrib region of the uh, monocot leaf, which is made up of sclerenchymatous cells. So, next one is the vascular differentiation. In dicot leaf, large vascular bundles do not show differentiation to protoxylum elements. Whereas in monocot leaf, large vascular bundles may show differentiation to protoxylum and metaxylum elements. So, next one is the nature of bundle sheath extension. That is the bundle sheath extension of dicot leaf is parenchymatous. Whereas here the bundle sheath extensions of the monocot leaf is sclerenchymatous. Okay. So, another one is the bulliform cells or motor cells. So, generally these bulliform cells, they are absent in epidermis of the dicot plant leaf. Whereas of these bulliform cells, they are present in the epidermis of the monocot plant leaf. So, the main function of these bulliform or motor cells is helps in the folding. Okay. So, when the water, when the water is not available, so the leaves will fold to stop the transpiration. Okay. <clears throat> so, this is about the differences between dicot and monocot leaf. So, main differences are here. Ma so, first one is the main differences are stomata, the guard cells. In the dicot is kidney shaped. The guard cells in the monocots is dumbbell shape. Next to shape, uh, that is uh, here, it is the shape of the leaf is broader and relatively smaller in size. Whereas in monocots, the leaf is slender and long in shape. Leaf orientation in dicot is dorsi ventral, whereas in monocots, it is isobilateral. Next one is the upper and lower surface color. So generally, upper surface of the dicot leaf is dark green in color. And lower surface is light green in color. Whereas in monocot leaf, uh, equal, uh, there is no differentiation. So e uh, equally green in color. So size of the vascular bundles also. <clears throat> the vascular bundle is large in dicot leaf. Whereas the vascular bundle, small and two types. Both the small and large vascular bundles are present. And large vascular bundles in the center. Okay. Next is tomato arrangement. That is uh, in the dicot leaf. Stomata is present on the lower epidermis only. This condition it is called as a hypostomatic. Whereas in mono, monocot leaf, that is stomata which is present on the upper and lower epidermis. So this condition it is called as a ampistomatic. Next one is the intercellular spaces. So large intercellular spaces are present in dicot leaf and less or small intercellular spaces are seen in monocot leaf. Next, silica deposition. So, generally they are present in the monocot leaf and they are absent in dicot leaf. Next, stomata arrangement. So, the stomata are randomly arranged in dicot leaf, whereas they are arranged parallel rows in monocot leaf. Next difference is the bundle sheath. 
it is single layered in dicot leaf and it is double layered in monocot leaf. Next, mesophyll differentiation is seen in, uh, that is a mesophyll is differentiated into polyside and spongy. In dicot leaf, where is a, there is no differentiation of mesophyll tissue in monocot. Next, venation, that is in dicot reticulate, uh, that is a reticulate type of venation is seen, whereas in monocot leaf, parallel venation. Next, here the hypodermis of the midrib, which is made up of polenchymatous cells in dicot leaf and sclerenchymatous cells in monocot leaf. Next, vascular bundle differentiation. That is generally these, there is a no differentiation in uh, only protoxylum element. Okay, is there any doubt, my dear friends? Madam has clearly explained about the structure of the monocot leaf and the structure of the dicot leaf. The difference between mono and dicot leaves. Are fast, fast or of the muscular bundles are stomata or epidermal tissues in polysade and the sponge tissue. So this is the major parts which we are observed in the new structures. Okay. So my dear friends, I'm going to wind up the session. Okay.